This isn't just a family hatch anymore. This is the Golf R. The price for this particular Golf is $62,990. But there are other Golf Rs. And then, of course, there's the GTIs. But all of the Golf Rs have a drive away price. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this is just a family hatch with a pretty makeover, but it's not, it's so much more. Two litre turbo TFSI engine gets 213 kilowatts and 380 newton metres. It has a seven speed wet clutch DSG and four motion all wheel drive with an extended electronic differential lock. That means it goes around corners like it's on rails. But it's got more though. You can change the suspension to suit yourself and the steering and you can put the automatic into sports mode. Now you might have heard that Volkswagen quite some while ago had trouble with their DSGs and that were dry sump DSGs. This is a wet sump DSG. So far, so good. But it makes the changes incredibly fast. It makes this a real track car that you can do a family road trip on if you want to. This car sits very low on the road and it's enhanced by these special edition Pretoria 19 inch wheels. They save a kilogram in weight and the tyres are so low profile that it barely comes up to my second knuckle. The grille also has this flat VW badge. You can see that's solid and behind that is the radar for the advanced cruise control system. And it's got the fancy keyless go system with the key in your pocket. You can lock and unlock the doors and start the car. I don't often get excited about exhaust systems, but this Akrapovich exhaust system is titanium and saves seven kilos. If that just doesn't look sexy, I don't know what does. And there's another set over the other side too. And this badge on the back is how you lock and unlock the back door. You lift it to open. Underneath here also is the camera that only comes out when the reverse light comes on. With the rear hatch open, there are internal grab handles to close and a nice flat floor. The seats go down 60-40 and they are completely flat. Underneath here is the Space Saver spare tyre. There's tons of room in the back. There's also a 12 volt power outlet and tethers for car seats. And as if all that wasn't sexy enough, have a look at these graceful sweeping lights. But I think these little individual cells on the tail lights look absolutely smashing. But at the heart of it, this is just a family hatch. And it has all the attributes that a family hatch has. So you can fit five people in at a squeeze, four are more comfortable. And you probably can't see it from all the way out there, but the back seats are a good several centimetres higher than the front seats so that the people sitting in the back can see over the heads of the people sitting in front unless the person in front's very tall. The rear is fairly snug but it's nice and cosy. The lip is low so you've got a duck getting in and out. And with the seat set for me there's only about a centimetre between me and the seat in front. The seats are Vienna leather upholstery and there's rear vents. And there's a hump in the rear, this is an all-wheel drive so there's still a drive tunnel going to the back wheels. The back doors themselves are fairly neat and tidy. There's some rather smart looking trim and the speakers for the 400 watt upgraded Dyn Audio sound system. There's a small pocket, you really couldn't fit all that much in there, but it's there anyway. But of course the front seat is where you want to be. The flat bottom steering wheel is leather clad. And again too, the seats are leather upholstered. But some of this leather is real, some of it is made in a factory. I defy you to tell the difference. The door has the usual buttons, door lock and unlock, and that's the controls for the mirrors and the controls for the lights, which you can see have automatic functions. There's the power window switches and the active display for the driver. As you can see, I've got this displaying navigation at the moment, but you can have that displaying anything you like. The steering wheel controls are typical VW and they're pretty easily laid out and I particularly like the pattern here on the central boss. On the other side are the smart cruise control controls. That's the distance from the car in front. Plus or minus takes you up and down 10 kilometres per hour and set and resume takes you up 2 kilometres per hour. 
There's automatic wipers to go with the automatic lights. And down here lurking in the shadows are the twin zone air conditioning controls. This 9.2 inch screen has a unique feature. Just watch this. I'll take my finger away and in due course that disappears so you get all of the real estate. As soon as you put your hand anywhere near it, it comes back again and this is in all functions. It's fast to respond and it comes with Apple CarPlay. And this button you are going to want to fiddle with from time to time. Press the button once to see what mode you're in and keep pressing it to change mode. Individual mode you can change all of these functions. And behind the mode button are the buttons for the auto on off and traction control. The electric parking brake and this button, pressing that will allow the car to hold the brakes in traffic. On this quiet country back road, it has the manners of a pussycat. It's quiet and refined. It's in comfort mode, so the steering is light and the suspension is all soft and pillowy because there's nothing worse than being in one of those cars that's rock hard and it's rock hard all the time. Minis, for example, lovely car, they look great and they're quirky, but the ride is hard and it's hard all the time to the point of being almost miserable. Going around corners like this, even in comfort mode, it sits incredibly flat. At parking speeds, the reversing camera has reverse cross-traffic alert. And reverse cross-traffic alert warns you if it sees someone coming. Nice sound. That's that Akrapovich exhaust. Let me just pop it into I've got it in race mode now, so the exhaust's even angrier and the suspension is even more taut and terrific. Everything's taut and terrific. The throttle's taut, the suspension's taut, the gear changes are sharp and you might notice that now we're doing not quite the legal speed limit and this is holding the gear. And it's doing that because it's keeping the turbos spinning at just the right speed so that when you put your foot down, it really goes for it. I'm going to use the manual system now. So it's in M1. Did you hear that little fart between gears? There are other clever things Golf R does too. It's got autonomous emergency braking not exactly unusual these days but it also does it at low speeds as well very low speeds in fact at parking speeds going forwards or backwards it'll try and stop you from hitting things so there should be no excuses to have little dents in your bumper bar Volkswagen have literally thrown everything at this car not only are there the fancy things to stop you from hitting cars in front like active cruise control and AEB that operates at any speed but it also actively tries to help you avoid accidents. So for example, if it sees something happening, it will try and steer you out of the way. It also has active lane control. And the active lane control comes up here on the dash, if that's what you want. At highway speeds, the active lane control keeps you in the middle of the lane. It also acts with the blind spot monitor to try and stop you from changing lanes on top of someone if you haven't seen them. So motorcyclists are safe. It has fancy emergency systems that will try and prevent accidents from happening. But if they do happen, it will not let you roll into a further accident. It'll apply the brakes. The airbags, obviously, there's a full complement of those. But there are other really cool things, just little design features that even the base model has. Just near the Dyne Audio speaker here in the A-pillar, there's another little window. And the centre armrest is adjustable. It covers the centre bin, which is kind of small and frankly a little bit useless. It's really just for nips and bits and bobs. And there's something else too. The VW Group 
also has other brands, like Audi for example. Now if you were to buy this same car in an Audi, it's going to cost you many shekels more. Arguably, this is better value. So to round up, Golf R is a brilliant package. You can get the cheaper Golf R if you want, or you could get a Golf GTI. But the Golf R is stunning to look at, stunning on the road, beautiful to ride in, lovely to steer, easy to park. Hmm. No, no, there isn't anything I don't like. I think it's sexy as hell. I could sit there and look at those art pieces of exhaust all day. It looks like something from a battle cruiser or a spaceship. It's scored well in practicality. Remember our new scoring system scores cars as they are against other cars in their class. Performance. Well, it's pretty nippy. It gets to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.8 seconds. Golf R scored 70 out of 100. Golf R is a pretty special car. I like it a lot. I like the understated looks. I like the fact that it isn't screamy and shouty and over the top until you put it into track mode and put your foot down. Press just there to subscribe.